BMW is leading the way. The i3 will be the first production vehicle which is not only fully powered by electricity, but also comes with a fiber-reinforced plastic car body. The production is complex and time-consuming, but the result is light and crash-proof at the same time. However, despite using advanced robots, at the moment there are still many steps necessary in order to complete one component. This is also fiber-reinforced plastic, a shin guard from the RWTH Aachen University. As a technology carrier, it is an example of how a fabric-reinforced plastic component can be produced without the usual effort and still maintaining the desired features, namely to be light as well as robust. We are far from fabric-reinforced plastic being an integral part of the industry. This means we are working on two fronts. On the one hand, we are improving the material and, on the other, more importantly, we are working on the production technique, so that in the future we will be able to mass-produce the fiber-reinforced plastics, which up to this point are still manufactured in such a complex way, and also really be able to do something about the price. And this could be one of the solutions. The Institut für Kunststoffverarbeitung IKV at the RWTH Aachen is presenting its latest project at the Trade Fair for Plastics and Rubber, K in Düsseldorf. A two-component plastic has been pressed into an injection molding machine and is soaking a fiber mat. And not till then does the plastic stiffen and after 300 seconds you have an entirely completed component as one example for high-tech plastic. Here we inject two components. These are combined in the mixing head and the viscosity is so low that the mixture can accordingly permeate and saturate the semi-finished fiber parts. The very clear advantage is the reduction of costs due to the deployment of the preceding production stages. A different kind of research is done at the Fraunhofer Institute in Oberhausen. By using liquid carbon dioxide and pressure up to 300 bar, scientists have developed a method to not only place particles on, but also in the already hardened plastic. The permeation of the molecules into the surface allows both particles as well as dyes to be pulled into the surface. During pressure reduction, the particles are deposited below the surface and the CO2 emerges from the component again and can be recycled. This way not only change of color can be implemented, but also the subsequent impregnation of light switches, for example with antibacterial nanosilver, in order to provide durable and scratch-resistant protection in hospitals. And now this can not only be done in the laboratory, but also on a larger industrial scale. The future is here and once again it is in the field of plastics, a material which, next to computer technology and according to industrial experts, has advanced and progressed most within the last 50 years. And still, as shown by our examples, the limit has not been reached yet.